Hola, Minasan! Welcome back, welcome back, welcome back for another round of tabletop gaming. Or maybe walkthrough? Maybe a walkthrough. Hey, you know what? Who knows? <laughs> We're back from hiatus. We're back from hiatus uh, with Magic Command, with another Magic Commander walkthrough of uh, my 10th deck, Ryu Storm's Edge, a Samurai Warrior deck. It's a Samurai Warrior, the Samurai Warriors. Yes. Uh, we're, we're channeling, we're channeling the uh, um, those Musou games from Tecmo Arcade. You know, where you take on a hundred, uh, <laughs> hundred guys at once, and 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 destroy uh, and like slice all one hundred of them at the same time. <laughs> that type of that type of deck. <laughs> well, I don't know yet. I don't know yet. Um, still gotta. Um, still gotta try and get this uh, thing underway. Um, I. Th so just to catch you all up, um, I've done nine decks so far. Uh, I've built nine decks so far. I've uh, and I did walkthroughs of nine of those decks. But um, over the course of the weeks, of course, I've been playing those decks and I've been upgrading those. Uh, so I gotta figure out uh, most definitely what to do with those previous nine decks because they have changed exponentially. New cards got added in since they were last seen. So, you know, but I don't want to do another walkthrough like this. I want to save walkthroughs for, you know, like new decks. You know what I mean? Like new decks. So, yeah, I'll figure that out. Um, I do have a big plan uh, um, starting next week. Uh, that I'll just give you a quick preview um, of what I'm trying to do here. Um, what I'm hoping I can do uh, to help all of you out, out there um, who love uh, playing Magic Commander. Um, it's a couple of things, but this is just a, a little taste of well, what's going to happen here. And hopefully I can expand on it, um, you know, with a, with a little support. So this is a oh, wrong screen, wrong screen. Okay, there we go. Um, oh my gosh, I am terrible here. <laughs> there we go. So here's a, here's a little preview. Um, this is, uh, this is my, uh, commander logistics chart. Basically, um, the whole plan is to break down uh, commander decks um, uh, by the card types, uh, mana curves, their power and toughnesses, as well as tactical. Uh, and, well, that's the whole plan. Uh, to try and improve upon my decks and something. And I'm hoping, you know, maybe this is something that can uh, inspire, you know, inspire you guys to do. For those of you who love building commanders and you love doing um, technical stuff. Um, who would love to do technical stuff and and so on um, yeah so that's gonna be starting next week where I'm going to go into more uh, greater details I've got some uh, other stuff in, in plan regarding uh, doing you know uh, managing mana and so on and and I'm also open to any ideas so when we um, when I deep dive next week with uh, with the analytics um, that's probably gonna uh, analytics and logistics. I'm probably gonna call it uh, Commander uh, Analytics and Logistics Cal for short. Magic Commander Analytics and Logistics. That's probably what I'll title the next week's show. Yeah, that's a cool idea. Analytics and Logistics. Um, it's basically a deep dive into um, into deck building itself and you know finding all those little things. And if it's helpful for you guys, you know, saying um, you know, uh, yeah, you're welcome to it. And if you uh, and hopefully um, when you see you know how I go about it next week, if you have any ideas on how I can expand upon it or improve upon um, that chart, you know um, uh, I'm open to y'all commenting down below and also slap those likes. <laughs> Keep slapping those likes. And what I'm hoping I could do um, is go beyond my um, my built decks and maybe you know cover pre-constructed decks with those charts. Um, with those analytical charts and really give a more um, a more analytical and logistical detail of pre-con decks, especially there's going to be a whole bunch of new ones um, coming out um, this year with um, the new sets um, that, that are planned. Um, so that's something that I'm willing to do. Um, and if that's something you're interested in seeing as well, you know, just comment down below um, or else it'll probably be something sparingly, but I do want to try it out. I do want to go for it. So yeah, we'll soon uh, we'll soon find out next week. But today, as planned, before I went um, before I took this into a hiatus, um, we're gonna I'm gonna give you all a walkthrough of my um, Ryu Storm's Edge uh, Commander deck. 
my Samurai Warriors deck. So uh, let's not waste too much time and get started. So here is uh, Ryu Storm's Edge. Sorry for the, the glare. These are new um, uh, new sleeves that I put on it. So there's going to be a lot of glare. So I do apologize for that. Um, I'll make sure I bring it up as close as possible. So this is my commander, Ryu Storm, um, Storm's Edge. Um, most likely inspired from Ryu and Street Fighter because we always used to call him Ryu before we got this proper pronunciation. Um, nation proper pronunciation <laughs> in Street Fighter. Um, and this is what um, caught my attention because I do have um, Ishin Two Swords as one and it's all interesting and everything, but I'm not interested in doing a tricolor deck because I already have a tricolor deck that's red, white, and green. I didn't want to do another red, white tricolor deck um, uh, with black. So this one actually caught my interest because I like what I see here. Uh, she has, uh, um, she's, uh, she costs two mana, uh, red and a white to, to cast. Legendary creature, human samurai. Uh, she has first strike. Uh, she has first strike. Uh, let's see here. Uh, first strike. And let's see here. Whenever a samurai or warrior you control attacks alone, untap it. If it's the first combat phase of the turn, there is an additional combat phase after this turn. So the whole point is to um, have multiple combats. That's the whole entire idea is to have multiple combats in a single turn, and I found to and I happen to have a couple of cards um, that were capable of doing that um, from uh, some older cards, and uh, and I also had some older cards that do tapping and untapping, although I still well you'll see you'll see, but this is uh, this is what she does, and that's the whole entire um, game here. So of course got eleven mountains uh, for my land, and I have eleven plains because it's plain awesome. Uh, pull. There we go, 11 planes. Uh, the standard uh, command tower, uh, where you tap to add one mana of any color of your commander's identity, so I have access to um, red, white, and, uh, to uh, red and white. Um, I was able to get my hands on some more Path of Ancestries because I ran out of them, and I made sure I got a lot, uh, as many as I could for all my commander decks. Uh, Path of Ancestry, um, Ancestry enters uh, tapped. Uh, you tap and you add one mana of any identity in your commander's uh, uh, of your commander's identity. Uh, one mana of any color in your commander's identity, which is red and white. Uh, when that mana is spent to cast a creature spell that shares a creature type with your commander, which is samurai, uh, then I get to scry one. Then I got Myriad Landscape. Um, this is one of the best fetch lands, uh, I got to say. If you have a Myriad Landscape, throw it in your deck. Um, Myriad Landscape enters the battlefield tap. You could tap for uh, for a mana rock, uh, for generic mana, which is great. And then if you spend two generic mana, tap it and sacrifice the landscape. You can search your library for up to two basic land cards that share a land site and put them onto the battlefield tap. Um, this is way better. Um, uh, compared to other fetch lands, uh, I do highly recommend it because not only do you get to have a land that you can tap with and get mana, even though it's generic mana, mana is still mana. And commander, any mana you could get, um, you could get. But you can, um, but you can on turn three double your land mass um, with this card if you happen to luck into this draw. So definitely throw a mirrored landscape. It's a great lifesaver too um, because uh, it's um, it's an instant. So if your opponent's going to blow you away, uh, blow your lands away, um, you can immediately tap and put some land back in there <laughs> uh, before you lose it. I hope that's correct. Um, Terramorphic Expanse, it's a very excellent um, fetch land here. Um, I rarely use these um, because because I do have lands, uh, you know, better lands uh, to help cover. But this is good for when you're really low on, on lands, especially dual lands. Or if you wanna, or if you're running very low on, or if you've got way too many colors, and you want to get that fetch land uh, quickly, um, or else this slot is better off for a, um, for a land that taps for land, like mirrored landscape. Uh, if you tap and sacrifice the expanse, you can search your library for a basic land card and put it uh, onto the battlefield tap, then shuffle, which is good because it goes into um, uh, onto the battlefield just like the landscape. So if anything, if you're gonna do fetch lands, um, terramorphic expanse and mirrored landscape should be in there. 
uh, should be in there if you want to do fetch lands. Uh, anything else uh, is fine, but those two are the best ones uh, in terms of fetch lands. And if you're going to do fetch lands, they should be the ones in there above all else. Uh, Sacred Foundry, uh, it's a land, mountain, plain, so you could tap for uh, red or white. Uh, when it enters the battlefield, uh, you may pay two life if you don't uh, enter the battlefield tap. So this is what they call the shock land, um, where you take two life and you don't have to tap it when you enter in the battlefield. Uh, very effective card, uh, quick mana to get. Uh, this one is from the Doctor Who set. I only have three Doctor Who cards. I am not interested in buying, you know, um, a whole bunch of Doctor Who cards, but some of the, but there were a few um, that I came across that were good and, and necessary. Like for uh, for example, Sundown Pants uh, Pass because I was running low because I needed red and white um, dual lands, and this was a pro um, this one was very well, uh, very much available, very cheap. Sundown Pass enters the battlefield tapped unless you control two or more other lands, and you can tap for a red and a white. So if you got two, um, any two lands, and what's good about it is that it's any lands. It's not even uh, specifically a basic land. So any land you have, you could drop it and not have to tap it. So that's the good thing about it. Next up is Temple of Triumph. It enters the battlefield tapped, and when it does enter the battlefield, scry one, tap uh, red and uh, red and white, red or white. Uh, Rustfield Bridge, an artifact land, enter the battlefield tap. It's indestructible. Always. Get, if, you, if you have a chance, uh, an opportunity to add an artifact land that's indestructible, throw that in there. Great to avoid those creature wipes, um, those um, board wipes, especially the land wipes. Or anything that targets lands for that matter, like Shatter. Uh, this taps for a red or a white. Then we got uh, Fury Calm Snarl. When it enters the battlefield, uh, you may reveal a mountain or plains card in, uh, from your hand. If you don't, then it comes to the play tap. Uh, tap for a red or a white. So, yeah, it's okay. Um, you don't have to reveal your land. Just put it into play tab if you're in a good position. Or else um, reveal it and get that mana available. Windscarred Crag comes into play tight, uh, tap when it enters the battlefield. Gain one life. Tap for a red or a white. Uh, very standard fair uh, dual land. Uh, inspiring Vantage. It enters the battlefield tap unless you control two or fewer lands. That's the difference. If it's two or fewer lands, um, it comes in. Uh, it comes into play untapped. So uh, great for that early game. If you got that early game uh, draw uh, and you don't have enough lands, bam, you got yourself uh, um, an easy uh, an easy get. Uh, and that's uh, a red and a white to your mana pool. And then we have Cliff Top Retreat. Uh, and that's just the the battlefield tapped unless you control a mountain or a plane. Uh, you get tap for a red or a white. Make sure you have a mountain or a plane to get that free uh, free uh, cash. Uh, Boros Guild Gate. Um, this is a gate to card. Uh, the Guild Gate enters the battlefield tap. Uh, red. Uh, you can tap for a red or a white. And then we have um, most difficult to pronounce word here. Restless Bivoac. It enters the um, battlefield tap. You can tap for a red and a white. And it has an ability uh, for one mana, a red and a white. Uh, it becomes a 2-2 red and white ox creature until end of turn, and it's still a land. Uh, when the Restless Bivouac uh, attacks, you put a plus one, plus one counter on target creature you control. So um, however you attack, if it's attacking, doesn't matter what it does, as long as it's attacking, you get a plus one, plus one counter, which is very good. Uh, for this deck, it's actually pretty good, getting a plus one, plus one counter on um, the samurai and the warriors it's really good so here's our first samurai this is uh from kamigawa neon dynasty all of my samurai in this deck is from neon dynasty i think i got all the reds and the whites i'm not sure <laughs> i still gotta double check but i think i got all the red and the white kamigawa um samurai uh peerless samurai uh costs two uh two mana and a red to cast uh human samurai menace it comes in with the menace uh, whenever a samurai or warrior you control attacks alone, the next spell you cast this turn costs one mana less to cast. Great, uh, a great mana drop. So basically, um, the sam um, the samurai side of things, um, the uh, uh, Neon Dynasty uh, samurai, they attack alone. Um, they they um, their effects work when they attack alone because that's kind of a thematic thing with samurai. Um, even though you can have a samurai army. 
you know. But the idea is that it's supposed to be another aspect of their um, Bushido, where they fight alone for honor and such. Um, I get the theme. Uh, it's a pretty fun theme, uh, as is Bushido. But um, at least here, they fix the cost compared to the samurai in the Kamigawa block, in the old Kamigawa block, where they were overcosted with um, with a Bushido ability that um, un gets undersold or oversold. Um, but they're still good. Bushido is still a good effect. It's just the cost and the um, it's just the price of admission to get to that Bushido effect. Um, next up is Upriser Renegade. Uh, of course, uh, one mana and a red to cast. Uh, Upriser Renegade gets uh, a plus two, plus zero for each other modified creature you control. Uh, uh, it's a one three, uh, one power, three toughness. So basically. Um, what Modified does, and uh, for those of you who might not know, you can check out my uh, Sisse Weatherlight Captain deck because it's dedicated entirely to Modification. But basically, um, Modifications are plus one, plus one counters, um, enchantment auras, and equipment cards. And when you attach um, any one of those three um, to, a, uh, to a creature or a card that has Modified on it, um, you, get the, you get the bonus and benefits. So in this case here, um, if I have any creatures that uh, have plus one plus one counters um, because of the land, uh, because of effects like the land or say uh, an equipment card attached to it, then uh, Upriser gets uh, plus two uh, plus zero, and he can really pump up fast because it's for each other. So if I have like three equipment creatures, that's plus six plus zero. Uh, he becomes a six three uh, samurai. Next up is one of the Yamazaki twins. This is Heiko, the general. Uh, she costs three mana and a red to, to cast. She's a legendary. Uh, she has Trample, 3-3 uh, three, three Trampler. Whenever a samurai or warrior you control attacks alone, you may cast target artifact card from your graveyard this turn. So um, it's a recursion. Uh, if you, uh, it's a recovery card. If you, uh, if you have an equipment, uh, um, an artifact, any artifact for that matter, like somebody knocks out your soul ring or something, and you attack a samurai alone, you can cast that soul ring uh, right out of there for one mana, and you could get it back into the field. Next up is Aki Ronin, uh, one mana and a red to cast. It's a, this is a goblin samurai. Um, I, I have all the anime cards, as you're probably noticing here. <laughs> Uh, it's a 1 3 creature. Whenever a, samurai, uh, whenever a samurai or a warrior you control attacks alone, you may discard a card if you do draw a card. So, great card drawing um, creature. Any samurai uh, or warrior can um, activate that, um, and that's good. Uh, up next is Reinforced Ronin, just one red to cast. 2 2. Impressively enough, it's a 2 2 um, one mana creature. It only costs a red. Uh, this is a artifact creature, human samurai comes with haste. At the beginning of your end step, return Reinforced Ronin to its owner's hand. So he's a great sneak attack. That's why he has the haste. You know, you swing in and then uh, he disappears. You're like, poof. It's very ninja-like, but not ninja-like, I guess. Uh, he got the ability channel for one mana and a red. Uh, if you discard the Reinforced uh, Ronin, you get to draw a card. So need that card draw, bam, there you go. Um, very rare in red. Anytime you could draw cards in red, um, you want to have that in your deck. Card draw is very, very important uh, with, in Commander. Now we come to the Red Warriors. Um, this is Cargon Intimidator, uh, one mana and a red. So um, this guy, um, this was the, one of the cards that I was waiting for in the mail. Um, that was trying um, that I want to get in the mail. This was uh, these cards, uh, these sets of warriors more specifically, um, were recommended to me by my commander pod because I couldn't figure out um, warriors. Because, like, for example, elves are known for um, assisting each other and being mana dorks, um, slivers are known for sharing abilities with each other. Um, you know, samurai are known for doing Bushido in the old Kamigawa block, um, in the Neon Dynasty block, um, they're known for um, getting activated whenever they attack alone. You see what I'm saying? Like, they're very thematic, you know what I'm saying? There's a sense of theme. Uh, dragons are always flying, angels are always flying, and and providing um, assistance. You, you get what I'm saying? And But um, warriors are all over the place in terms of effects and abilities. Um, I guess their themes are more focused, oriented, and with... Um, 
with uh, whatever their locations are. Like if they're in, in Dominaria or if they're in, say, um, Nix, you know, saying that, that it's exclusive to that location. But it's very hard because there's over 300 of these um, from what I've seen. And and so I didn't know which ones uh, can be able to help me out. And my commander pod helped me out um, and, and uh, pointed me to... Uh, warriors that can work alongside samurai, uh, more specifically uh, as well as with equipment cards. So this is Kargan Intimidator, one mana and a red uh, to cast, human warrior. Uh, cowards can't block warriors, that's a, a new creature type I've, uh, I learned from them, cowards. Uh, for one mana, you choose one that hasn't been chosen this turn. Um, the first effect is Kargan Intimidator gets plus one plus one until end of turn. Uh, the second effect is target creature becomes a coward until end of turn. And the third effect is target warrior gains trample until end of turn. So that's actually pretty, um, uh, pretty choi uh, nice choice selection. Um, and not only that, but if I can make a creature a coward, um, I can get a free swing in uh, with the Intimidator. Uh, so that's pretty cool. 3-1. Uh, so imagine, uh, imagine a... Uh, Imagine somebody, you know, playing uh, Eldrazi. <laughs> make a make a coward out of an Eldrazi. There you go. <laughs> oh, I got a twelve twelve Eldrazi. I'm gonna I'm gonna annihilate all of you. Oh, okay, well you're a coward now, and I'm gonna pass through you. <laughs> Pretty cool. Um, another recommendation here is more uh, is Morog Fury of Akum. Um, Akum. Uh, four mana and two red to cast. Legendary creature, Minotaur Warrior. Each creature you control gets plus one, pl uh, plus zero for each time it has attacked this turn. So again, uh, this works with um, Ryu, who gives me two um, attack phases, two combat phases. Uh, landfall, I really love that landfall, uh, quite honestly. It's a really cool effect here. Whenever a land enters the battlefield under your control, if it's your main phase, there's an additional combat phase after this phase. At the beginning of that combat, untap all creatures you control. So um, he's already got it built in, uh, along with Ryu. Uh, it's crazy. I don't know how many times I'd be able to pull that off, uh, multiple combat steps um, in a single turn. So that's something that is going to have to, uh, that's going to be trial and error. As time goes along, Tongarth, a Talrum hero, an old character from the days of yore. Um, three mana and two red to cast. He is a legendary, legendary Minotaur warrior. Excuse me. <coughs> a legendary warrior. Uh, he's a 4 4 creature. Attacking doesn't cause Tongarth, a uh, Talrum hero, to, uh, to tap. So he basically has vigilance. Um, a very rare red vigilance creature for one mana and a red and a tap and then tap the card Tengarth deals damage equal to its power to target creature that creature deals damage equal to its power to Tangarth. so you know they trade blows um, I guess a desperation move if anything or if I get plenty enough plus one plus one counters then he becomes real nasty uh, against uh, the weenie creatures uh, here's another Intimidator, Bold Weir Intimidator, 5 uh, mana and 2 red uh, to cast, Giant uh, Warrior. Uh, cowards can't block warriors, which is uh, a big deal, because if I tap a red, uh, tap for red, uh, target creature becomes a coward until end of turn, and I can do that over and over again. So if I get enough mana, I can just basically turn everyone into cowards, um, all, of the, all of my opponent's creatures into cowards, and I could get an easy swing, like one big uh, swoop with an army. For uh, two mana and a green, uh, target creature becomes a warrior until end of turn. So that means that I can t uh, make my samurais um, officially a uh, warrior. Um, I'm assuming uh, in addition to its uh, uh, type. So if I have plenty enough mana, you know, I can always make warriors out of samurai and cowards out of all my opponents and get that army swing in. Here is another human warrior. This is archetype of aggression. This one is an enchantment creature. Uh, one mana and two uh, red to, to cast, the three two creature. Creatures you control have trample, which is excellent. Uh, creatures your opponents control uh, lose trample and can't have or gain trample. So this is a trample lock, very interesting. A very interesting card here. It's a trample lock, I've never seen anything like it. Um, I like that. Great, um, great for the defense. 
Uh, great defensive measure. Uh, next up is uh, Laelia, the Blade Reforged. Two mana and a red to cast. This is a legendary creature, Spirit Warrior. Uh, she has haste, a uh, 2 2 creature. Whenever Laelia, the Blade, uh, Blade Reforged, attacks, exile the top card of your library. You may play that card this turn, which is awesome. I don't have to even pay for the cost either. Uh, whenever one or more cre uh, cards are put into exile from your library and or your graveyard, put a plus one plus one counter on, on Laelia. So she buffs up. Um, her effect lets, uh, lets her buff up um, every time she attacks. And that's even more scarier because that means that she's getting plus one plus one while she's attacking because it goes on to stack. And that's crazy. That's a, that's a crazy thing. Uh, next up is Kazul, Tyrant of the Cliffs, an ogre warrior. Uh, legendary creature, three mana, two red uh, to cast, five four creature. His effect is whenever a creature an opponent controls attacks, if you're the defending player, create a three three red ogre creature token unless that creature's controller pays three. So I get a free creature if I'm attacked uh, uh, I'm uh, during my opponent's turn and my opponent will have to pay three mana to prevent me from adding another creature and it would be a uh, and I'm assuming it would be an ogre warrior uh, well it's an ogre anyway but it's probably got the, gets the warrior type I don't know if it's a uh, moving on over to the white creatures uh, samurai we got seven tailed samurai three mana and a white uh, three to a seven tail mentor not seven tail samurai though that's an awesome name uh, seven tail mentor three mana and a, and a white to cast two three creature fox samurai when seven tail mentor enters the battlefield or dies put a plus one plus one counter on target creature or vehicle you control so again more um more uh tokens comes into the field if it sacrifices itself um it get um it'll give um counter in both situations uh sky blessed samurai uh six mana and one white it's an enchantment creature, human samurai, 4-4, four, four, with flying. Uh, this spell casts uh, costs one generic mana less to cast for each enchantment you control. Um, I got plenty of enchantments to work with here. And if um, if I wanted to, you know, if I have it, um, have enough uh, enchantments, I could be able to drop it with no problem, um, with no problem at all, and get... Uh, uh, and get them out very quickly. The flying part may, uh, is what makes it work um, big time. Uh, next up is Sunblade Samurai, another enchantment uh, creature. Uh, four mana on the white to cast. Uh, um, she has Vigilance, 4-4. Four, four. Uh, she has uh, Channel, two mana, and discard um, this card. And you can search your library for a basic planes, reveal it, and put it into your hand. Shuffle it and gain two life, which is pretty good. Um, that's pretty good for two generic mana. And a discard, you get a card and two life for the cost. That's actually pretty awesome. Um, that's a pretty awesome cost for a channel. Uh, next up is Selfless Samurai. Uh, samurai. Uh, one mana and a white. Fox Samurai, 2-2 two, two creature. Whenever a samurai or warrior you control attacks alone, it gains lifelink until end of turn. You can sacrifice a Selfless Samurai, and another target creature you control gains indestructible until end of turn. So... You got that nice little finisher. You, um, I don't know, but uh, the indestructible, giving the creature indestructible is cool. And um, getting life link is is really awesome. Whenever uh, samurai attacks alone, very 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 devastating thing uh, to deal with. Here's the other Yamazaki twin, uh, Nautica the poet. Uh, two mana and a white to cast, legendary creature. Uh, she has vigilance three two. When a, a samurai warrior you control attacks alone, you may cast target enchantment card from your graveyard this turn. So much like um, um, her sister, uh, she can retrieve enchantment cards here uh, as opposed to artifacts, which is pretty good. Because um, there are artifact creatures and plenty of artifacts in this deck that could use retrieval. So the Yamazaki twins really help this deck out because it's very um, artifact and enchantment heavy. And so being able to retrieve um, both um, both of those types uh, from the graveyard with these two is very excellent. <clears throat> of course, um, both of them have the same thing, which is to cast. So I have to have um, the, the, the money, uh, the mana, to be able to um, acquire it. A Ganjo uh, Exemplar. 
Another enchantment creature, one mana and a, and a white to cast. Whenever a samurai or warrior you control text alone, it gets plus one, plus one until end of turn. Uh, two one uh, creature. Very straightforward, you know, quick bu uh, a quick buff. You know what I'm saying? A quick one, one buff for whenever um, someone attacks alone. So, you know, those uh, red warriors that I got um, <laughs> that make cowards, those intimidators, pretty good. Because um, if I haven't gotten Joe out, and I attack with an Intimidator, and I made someone a coward. Um, it's a quick buff, easy swing. Um, this is a very, very, very hyper-aggressive um, deck going here. Uh, Imperial Subduer, two mana and a white to cast. 3-2 uh, creature. Whenever a Samurai Warrior you, attack, uh, you control attacks alone, tap target creature you don't control. <clears throat> so, great way to um, get past um, um, Defenders. Uh, of course, keep in mind that when it comes to tapping, your opponent can tap and put um, tap their creature and put on the stack um, before the tap effect uh, goes through. Um, so be very careful when it comes to um, dealing with tapping. Uh, make sure that the creature that the opponent um, is tapping doesn't have a very, very, very powerful move that can hurt you um, on the stack. So just be ready for anything. Uh, so now we're coming to the White Warriors. Uh, well, Moth Rider Patrol, one uh, one white mana, Fox Warrior, flying. For three mana white and tapping, uh, you get to tap a target creature, 1-1. One, one. This is a 1-1 one, one creature. So basically, uh, as you probably um, guessed by now, um, this is all um, part of the, the game of deck strategy is to tap creatures so I can have an opening. Uh, light Walker, this is a one mana and a white to cast. Uh, human warrior uh, light walker has flying as long as it has plus one plus one counter on it it's a two one creature so just slap a plus one plus one counter on it and you got an easy flyer uh not bad and i have uh knight to have the the creatures that can provide the tokens which is good um this one uh here's one that was um recommended by my pod a uh, russian f um foremost uh one mana and two white to cast human warrior it's got double strike Whenever um, uh, Foremost enters the battlefield or attacks, that's the key thing there, whenever it attacks as well, another target warrior creature you control gain, um, gains double strike until end of turn. So if you have the, um, the Intimidator out with uh, Foremost, you make um, your, one of your creatures a warrior, uh, then it'll get the benefit of Foremost and have double strike. So there's a lot of synergy going on between the creatures, which is really great. Um, this one uh, was another one that was recommended to me. Uh, Stone Hewer Giant, three mana and two white to cast. It's a giant warrior. It has vigilance, four four creature. Uh, one uh, one mana a white, and then tapping uh, this card, you search your library for an equipment card, put it onto the battlefield, attach it to a creature you control, any creature, then shuffle. So this is a great fetch card. Like this is a great fetch card. Um, very quick to get. Um, Everything is falling apart. <laughs> Uh, very fast to this is a very great uh, good card because um, it searches for equipment so it's a good way to um, um, deal with like any kind of card drawing situations and what's great about it is that it enters the battlefield so you don't have to pay for it and uh, and it's attached to a creature if it's out there um, if, it, if a creature is out there so it's pretty good uh, this is pretty good uh, and you can speed through the whole thing um, you know, saying like really get through your deck quickly with uh, with the giant. So, very awesome. Uh, next up is Space Marine Devastator. Um, again, this is from Warhammer. Again, I'm not you know that into universes beyond. Um, quite honestly, I'm not that very much into it. But this was a very good card that was recommended again by my pod. Um, it costs three mana and a white to cast. This is an Astartes Warrior. I'm not familiar with Warhammer, so you'll have to forgive me. I don't play, um, I don't play that the the classic um, war game. Uh, this has Squad Two, which says as an additional cost to cast this spell, uh, you may pay two mana any number of times when this creature enters the battlefield. Create that many tokens that are copies of it. Uh, then it has an effect called Grav Cannon. When Space Marine Devastator enters the battlefield, destroy up to one target, artifact, or enchantment. So it's a disenchant. Um, and I can actually throw in as many creatures as possible. So if I have enough mana, um, 
if I once I pay my four, if I have plenty enough mana, I could throw in a whole bunch of these warriors. So it's a great way to really get some army going. And if I'm creature screwed, um, then I can um, um, then this will help me out with uh, the creature situation. Um, and what are they? They're copies. So um, basically, I'll be dropping um, three three copies of Space Marine Devastator, and I'm assuming since it's a copy of this particular card, it's going to have the Graph Cannon effect. So this could be uh, so this could turn into a, a, an easy board wipe if I have the right amount of mana. That's pretty nasty. Uh, next up is um, Blinding Mage. This is one of my old cards. Uh, this is a one mana and a white to cast. It's a human wizard for a mana and tap the, the um, tap this creature. I could tap target creature one two. So basically, um, basically this whole deck revolves around tapping and equipment uh, for the most part. Uh, Master Decoy from Tempest, one of uh, one of my old cards. Uh, one mana and a white to cast. Uh, this is a soldier, I guess a human soldier. So just like the the other card, uh, one white and a tap, and you tap the creature to two, one two, also. So target creature gets tapped. Uh, multicolor creatures. This is Rizona, um, Asari Commander. One mana, red and a white to um, to cast. Legendary creature, human samurai. Three three. She has haste. And whenever Rosona deals combat damage to a player, if it doesn't have an Instructable Counter on it, uh, put an Instructable Counter on it. I'm assuming that's Rosona who gets the counter. Um, yeah. Uh, whenever uh, combat damage is dealt to you, remove an Indestructible Counter from Rosona. So, it's not... I mean, it's got haste. It's 3-3. Three, three. It gets an Indestructible Counter, but it loses the Indestructible Counter. I don't know how to feel about that. But, um... It, it, at least it's indestructible, so it's a th she becomes three three indestructible on three mana on a three mana drop. So that's all right, and she's a samurai, so she gets benefits too, from uh, from the from the synergy. She gets synergy benefits. There we go. Um, Asari Kame uh, Captain three mana white and a red to cast human samurai four three creature haste whenever a samurai or warrior you control attacks alone it gets plus one. Plus zero until end of turn for each samurai or warrior you control. So yeah, even if um, so yeah, even though she's um, you know, um, not that great or anything, um, she is a samurai and she will work. Uh, she will give um, uh, the the Asari captain the benefits, um, and add that plus one plus zero. So it's not bad. It's not bad. Uh, next, the uh, next one is Akiri Fearless uh, Voyager, one mana, red and white to cast. This one is a core warrior, legendary, three three creature. Uh, whenever you attack a player with one or more equipped creatures, draw a card. For um, one white, it's an instant. You may unattach an equipment from a creature you control. If you do, tap that creature and it gains indestructible until end of turn. Um, I'm not sure what the um, what the benefit to this is, but what I do know is that I need to fit in a couple of cards that I happen to have um, to undo that. And I don't know um, honestly if this effect is good. the The only good thing about um, a, um, Akiri is the fact that whenever I attack. Um, with one or more equipped creatures, I could get a card draw. That's really all it's really good for. I have no idea um, what unattaching, you know, tapping and gaining. I mean, it's tapped and has indestructible. Um, I guess in a sense when the combination works, you know what I'm saying, when I get that extra combat step and I untap all my creatures, I guess that makes sense. But it's just, seem, uh, I guess it makes sense and keeps it balanced. Um, but it just seems a little weird. Uh, and it's until end of turn on top of that. So it really hinges really, really on getting um, Ryu to work uh, to get that untap um, and, and other cards that, um, that gives me that second step on the untap. Uh, here is an Artificer, uh, Tiana Ship's Caretaker, three mana, red and a white, legendary creature, three, three. Uh, she has Flying First Strike. Whenever an aura or equipment you control is put into a graveyard from the battlefield, you may return that card to its owner's hand at the beginning of the next end step. Um, so this is another card retrieval. If I lose my um, cards, my equipment cards, 
or my ores if I have any I can get them back um, right away um, well not right away at the um, at the beginning of the next end step so whatever my next end step is that's when I get it uh, and here's another artificer uh, to help with my equipment cards uh, this is Nahiri forged uh, in fury four mana red and a white to, to cast legendary creature five four she has affinity for equipment, so uh, her spell, so this spell costs one mana less for each uh, equipment uh, that I control. Doesn't matter if it's attached or not. If I have four equipments uh, in the field, um, then she's only uh, then I only have to pay uh, a red and a white, which is pretty good. She has the effect of whenever an equipped creature you control uh, attacks, exile the top card of your library. You may play that uh, play this card. Uh, you may play that card this turn. Uh, you may cast equipment spells uh, this way without paying their uh, mana cost. So, I still have to pay the mana cost for any other card, but if it's in the equipment, it's a free, um, it's a free get. So that's good. So if um, so, if that card that that gets exiled happens to be a bone splitter, I can get the bone splitter for free out on the field. Then I went with planeswalkers. Um, I spotted up a couple of planeswalkers. Rather than putting in a couple of creatures to round it out to thirty, I decided to go with um, a couple of planeswalkers because these are actually pretty good. This is Gideon Jura. Uh, three mana and two white to cast. Uh, he's got a uh, six uh, loyalty counters. He comes with six loyalty counters for uh, plus two loyalty. Uh, to destroy, um, during target opponent's next turn, creatures that player controls attack Gideon draw if able. Minus two um, loyalty. Yeah, I could destroy a um, uh, a target tapped creature. And for zero loyalty. Until end of turn, Gideon Jura becomes a 6-6 six, six human soldier creature that's still a planeswalker. Prevent all damage that would be dealt to him this turn. Um, I wish he was a warrior. Um, I wish he was a warrior, though, because that would have been awesome. But the fact that he can destroy a tapped creature is a big deal. And it's kind of, uh, of course, I do have to um, make a player attack. Uh, attack. Um, uh, uh, on the next turn. But um, it's it's pretty flexible. But the fact that I can destroy a ta um, a tap creature is is a big deal, um, given that I have uh, tap effects. Um, so I tap a uh, so master decoy tap a creature, uh, pay to loyalty destroy that creature, and get it off the field. So good creature destruction. This one I um this one I stumbled on. Um, <laughs> uh, the store owner was shocked uh, that not only was it on sale but that. Um, you didn't catch on to it. <laughs> I got to it first. <laughs> this is the Eternal Wanderer, four mana and two white to cast. Um, she has uh, the static effect. No more than one creature can attack the Eternal Wanderer each turn. So yeah, if you want to attack, you can't send a multiple creatures. It's got to be one creature. Uh, she comes in with five loyalty, plus one uh, loyalty. Exile up to one target artifact or creature. Return that card to the battlefield under its owner's control at the beginning of that player's next end step. So it's a good way to um, move a creature out. If there's someone in the way um, that I want to swing uh, swing with, exile, and then uh, hit. And then get the hit off. Um, and what's good about it is that it's, uh, it's under... Um, is that it doesn't return until the beginning of that player's next end step. For, so for a pot, that's a big deal because that's a lot of turns. Um, the, the player has to wait until their card is out of exile. For zero mana, and this is big, uh, create a 2-2 white samurai creature token with double strike. And it costs zero loyalty. So every single turn, I'll be dropping samurai like no other. I'm assuming it's a once per turn thing with loyalties. Um, I have to assume that's the case. So Because um, then I'll be dropping a whole bunch of samurai. So it makes sense. And for uh, minus four uh, loyalty, uh, for each player, choose a creature... That player controls. Each player sacrifices all creatures they uh, control. Not chosen this way. Hmm. So it's a creature wipe, basically. It seems like it's a creature wipe. Uh, for each player, choose a creature that player controls. Each player sacrifices all creatures they control. Not chosen this way. Okay, so um, you get to keep one creature, and then uh, and then everybody loses everything. Um, and that includes me, so it's a devastation move. Okay, it's a it's a full on creature wipe, um, and it's for each player, right? 
Oh, oh okay. I um I wasn't paying attention to the first clause for each player. So each of us chooses one creature, um, and then we sacrifice the rest. So it's like um, Cataclysm, but for creatures. There we go. There we go. So it's a full-on creature wipe. Excellent. Very excellent. Uh, fervor, uh, for two mana and a red. Now we're going into the enchantments. Uh, creatures you control gain haste. Uh, they may, yeah, control gain haste. Simple and straightforward. Uh, I believe this is Menace. Goblin War Drums, two mana and a red to, to cast. Uh, enchantment, each creature you control cannot be blocked by more uh, by only one creature. So this is a very big uh, big deal for my samurai since uh, and war since they have to attack alone to trigger effects, those synergetic effects. So having menace helps out. Uh, now for some some evilness. <laughs> this is smoke, a very very old card. Uh, two red to cast enchantment. No player may untap uh, more than one creature during his or her untap phase. <laughs> Oh, so I only have to attack with one samurai. You can only tap uh, untap one creature. <laughs> what really ensures that 1v1. Uh, Orcish Oriflam, uh, three mana and a red enchantment uh, to cast. All attacking creatures you control get plus one, plus zero. It's a little expensive, but you know, getting that plus one uh, make, can make the difference. Sorcery. Uh, Relentless Assault, two mana and two red to, to cast. Uh, untap all creatures that attack this turn. You may declare an additional attack during uh, during your main phase this turn. <laughs> yes, this is uh, this is pretty crazy. Uh, pretty crazy card. <laughs> Very crazy. Uh, this one is uh, called Round Two. This is uh, a copy of Seize the Day card, so um, I cannot put in another Seize the Day card because this uh, represents Seize the Day. It's a sorcery, three mana and a red to cast. Untap target creature. After this main phase, there is an additional combat phase followed by a, an additional main phase. It's got a flashback, uh, two mana and a red. So again, more uh, more mana, you know, more uh, more combat phases to work with. Just really part of the mind. Um, very straightforward, simple, shatter. One mana and a red to cast, instant, destroy target artifact. That's it. Uh, some destruction there. Uh, now to the white enchantments. Uh, knighthood, uh, two mana and a white. All creatures you control gain first strike. So that's great for those one-on-one -on -one matchups with my um, samurai and my warriors. Uh, this is Might of the Ancestors. I came across this at a store, at another store. Uh, two mana and a white enchantment. At the beginning of combat, on your turn, uh, target creature you control gets plus two, plus zero, and gains vigilance until end of turn. I snagged a couple of these and put them in um, my other decks. <laughs> uh, this is Solitary Sanctuary. Um, another card that I found at another store. Two mana and a white enchantment. When uh, the sanctuary enters the battlefield, tap target creature and opponent controls and put a stun counter on it. If a permanent with a stun counter would become untapped, remove one from it instead. Uh, I'm, I'm gonna need a little help on that one. So whenever you tap an untapped creature an opponent controls, put a plus one plus one counter on target creature you control. So Master Decoy, uh, cards like Master Decoy, I tap my opponent, I get to put a plus one plus one counter. So it's more um, synergetic stuff um, to help out and get the, and boost up my Samurai and Warriors. Then here's an old D, here's an old D, an old classic. Uh, this is Kismet, uh, enchantment, three, uh, three mana and white to cast. All of target players, uh, creatures, lands, and artifacts come to play tap. I believe that got um, eroded. Um, if I remember correctly, that got errata to artifacts, creatures, and lands your opponents control enter the battlefield tap. So let me just show you um, here uh, in Scryfall. Take it to the view screen. So it says it right here, Kismet. Artifact, um, artifacts, creatures, and lands uh, your opponents control enter the battlefield tapped. So that's uh, the new errata. Um, that's the current errata. Uh, cards does not uh, does not affect cards that phase in. It affects all opponents. Cards enter the battlefield tap. They do not enter the battlefield untapped and then immediately tap. Therefore, they do not trigger any effects due to tapping. It's automatic tap. 
So just to make sure that's clear, because this is a very old card. That's why I say it's very old. Um, you can see its age. Uh, <clears throat> Um, you can see that the text age. <laughs> well, it's not uh, it's not like all worn out or anything, but you know what I mean. It's uh, this phrasing is outdated, but yeah, with Kiss Man, all um, all creatures my opponents control enter the battlefield tap, and so with smoke that just makes things even more nastier. <laughs> uh, classic disenchant staple uh, for white. Uh, one mana, uh, one mana and a white to cast instant destroy target artifact or enchantment. Get rid of them soul rings, people. <laughs> Then I got this one here, Divine Offering, another one, uh, one man and a white. This one targets only artifacts specifically, but um, I get to uh, gain life um, equal to that uh, destroyed artifacts uh, casting cost. Well, whatever its um, converted mana cost is, uh, I get to have that much life. Here's uh, a creature wipe. Here's a board wipe. Uh, cleansing Nova, three mana and two white. Sorcery, choose one. I can destroy all creatures or destroy all artifacts and enchantments. So I got options with this, um, if necessary. Uh, this one now we're coming into the artifacts. Uh, this are these are the equipment cards that I'm using at the moment. Uh, Fire Shrieker, three mana. Uh, equipped creature has double strike. Uh, equipped uh, for two mana. So that's uh, pretty good for uh, for the samurai and the warriors. Then I got Nodachi, two mana. Uh, three mana to equip. Equip creature gets plus two, plus zero, and has first strike. Uh, this one I got uh, from um, recently uh, um, over the weekend. This is Swashbuckler's Whip. Uh, one mana to cast, one to, to equip. Uh, equip creature has reach. It also has two mana. Tap it. Um, tap the creature. And you tap target artifact or creature, which is good. And for eight mana and uh, and tap the creature, uh, equip creature, uh, discover ten. So I could get my hands on cards very quickly, but it'll cost me eight mana to do that. But it's a good fast way of getting those cards. Um, you know, saying it's very high costing, but being able to discover and get any card out because it's a discover ten, because uh, it's discover ten. So pretty much any card in my deck, uh, basically the top card is always going to come out uh, very easily. Which is pretty good. Uh, Gorgon Flail, uh, two uh, two mana to, to cast, two to equip. Uh, equip creature gets plus one plus one and death touch, so it's a big deal. Uh, this one, the Tongue Twister, Swift Foot, uh, Swift Foot Boots, Swift Foot Boots, uh, two mana uh, to cast, one to equip. Uh, equip creature gets hexproof and haste. It can't be the target of spells or abilities your opponents controls. Pretty good. Uh, here's Bone Splitter, an old card of mine. Uh, one mana uh, to cast, one to equip, and equip creature gets plus two, plus zero. Very straightforward. A samurai, a samurai running with a katana in one hand, and a Bone Splitter in the other. That's pretty scary. Uh, this one I got a um, uh, couple of weeks ago. Sword of the Animist. Uh, two mana to cast, two to equip. Equip creature gets plus one, plus one. Whenever equipped creature attacks, uh, you may search your library for a basic land card and put it into the battlefield tap, uh, then shuffle. So this is great, uh, a great way to really get uh, cards. This is a uh, foil, that's why it's got a heavier glare. Uh, there we go. So great card for equip uh, for decks involving equipment. This one is in the Lost Caverns of Ixalan. This was actually a pretty cool card um, that I got uh, that I got my hands on. Uh, I got that from the pack. This is uh, Strider Harness, three mana, one for equip, uh, one to equip. Equipped creature gets plus one plus one and has haste. So for an easy one, uh, bring a bring a samurai in there, get um, give him that plus one plus one buff and a haste to, to attack. Same for the warriors. Sword of Vengeance, very powerful. Uh, three mana to cast, three to equip. Uh, equip creature gets plus two plus zero and has first strike, vigilance, trample, and haste. So make a scary samurai out of that one or a scary warrior. It's very scary. Uh, time oh, and and this one, uh, this one I got um, um, from that convention mystery pack um, that um, that I uh, that I bought. Uh, I bought like two of those packs, uh, convention mystery pack kind of thing, uh, at the at the local store, <laughs> at the local store, the local game shop that I go to. 
Uh, Whisper Silk Cloak. Three mana to cast, two to equip. Uh, cre uh, equip creature can't be blocked and has Shroud. Great for the Samurai, especially when they attack alone and trigger those synergies. And it's time for the Mana Rocks. Um, Commander Sphere, uh, three mana, add one mana uh, of any color to your, uh, of your commander's color identity. And then draw a card if you sacrifice the Sphere. Uh, Mind Stone, uh, an old classic... Uh, Interesting, I'm not using the classic card, I'm using the more current print. Um, Mind Stone, uh, tap for uh, generic mana, one uh, tap and sack the, the Mind Stone, draw a card. I'm surprised I'm not using my Tempest uh, version. I'm gonna have to rectify that. <laughs> and of course, everyone's favorite, uh, mandatory artifact. It's mandatory, it's gotta be in every single deck. <laughs> I agree, uh, I honestly agree on that assessment, honestly. Um, I don't see any reason why no deck should um, have that. You got to have a very, very valid reason. Um, a very, very, very valid and solid reason not to have Soul Ring in this deck. Uh, tap for two generic mana. One uh, one mana to cast. And so here are my tapping um, artifacts. This is Relic Barrier. Uh, straight from Legends. Uh, if, you've ever, if you've never seen a Legends card, this is what a Legends card looks like. Um, so uh, it's two to cast. Uh, just to tap it and check it out man the old T symbol on there <laughs> uh, you tap it uh, and the uh, target artifact becomes tap so you tap a target artifact so artifact creature oh tap that um, oh you got a soul ring uh, tap that <laughs> I know it's a waste to, uh, it's a waste to tap a soul ring because uh, they could just put it on the stack but you can you can force their hand on that one um, uh, especially if you can make them mistime it because you can actually, that's the interesting too. Um, actually, now that I think about it, because of the way mana works now, where it fit, uh, fizzles out um, with each step as opposed to the end of the uh, end of the turn, this is actually very powerful against uh, Sol Rings. So by so after my opponent does the untap phase, um, during their upkeep, um, because this is a straightforward tap, um, this is an instant tap. I could just tap the Sol Ring right off the bat. And then they'll they'll lose the two mana unless they have an instant. Um, great way to, to block them out of their Sol Ring. It's a great uh, Sol Ring counter. Any other tap counter, just tap it, uh, tap that artifact, uh, and deprive them of their um, of their ability, uh, their their means. Uh, Icy Manipulator, another classic. This one is from Ice Age. Uh, Homelands or Ice Age? Ice Age. This is from Ice Age. Uh, four mana, uh, one mana in a tap. Uh, you tap the target artifact, creature, or land. So yeah, uh, tap anything. And again, this is instant speed. So during the upkeep, uh, tap and tap uh, uh, any of their mana rocks, and they'll lose their mana um, on their next step uh, when they go into their draw step. Um, and then finally, from Tempest, Puppet Strings, three mana uh, to cast. Uh, for two mana to tap, you could tap or untap target creature. So yeah, I do have uh, the means of untapping uh, uh, target uh, uh, for Rizona. Uh, uh, Rizona's effect, but um, yeah, it's a little, it's a little. Yeah, 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 yeah. At least I can untap. <laughs> so basically, um, the whole strategy for Ryu Storm's Edge is um, is that I get. A, um, I get multiple combat phases and I'm using Samurai from Neon Dynasty that um, attacks alone, they trigger effects. Um, whenever a Samurai or a Warrior type creature attacks alone um, and I'm taking, trying to take advantage of the equipment cards because um, some, of the, some of my Samurai um, can get boosts um, whenever there is um, uh, equipment attached. Uh, trying to take advantage of tapping uh, my opponent's creatures so I can have a, a clear a clear path because one be because um, swinging with one creature is uh, very slow for commander uh, let me put it this way uh, let me put it this way um, it's very difficult um, to play commander with um, if you're swinging with just one creature every single um, turn because you want to do mass amounts of damage 
And being able to use Ryu to trigger a second main phase while attacking with one creature allows for multiple hits. And with the right type of equipment, say Fire Shrieker with Double Strike, um, being able to use Ryu to do two combat steps and playing with my Lone Samurai that triggers, or my Lone Warrior that triggers um, the Samurai's um, effects, adding more onto um, my attacking Samurai. And being able to double strike um, over and over again uh, leads to um, multiple uh, mass amounts of damage. Uh, with the help of the intimidators, by making creatures cowards, can give me some give me a free, uh, free path. Um, that's why I tap. Um, I'm using tap cards um, like Master Decoy and Relic Barrier, so that way I can tap creatures and create a path. The whole entire idea is to create a path, so that way I can attack alone. Because if I attack alone, uh, my opponent will just easily block. You know what I'm saying? It's, uh, it's an easy tell and they'll block. But if I tap, it doesn't matter if my opponent taps their creatures in response as an instant. All I need is just for the creature to be tapped. And I get the free path. And then I can trigger um, cards um, that gives me, like Relentless Assault. Um, but I can be able to play Relentless Assault or uh, Round 2 or trigger effects like, um, like Ryu. Uh, like Ryu does. So that way I can get those extra combat um, steps. And, uh, and I can be able to attack again uh, with my samurai because um, they'll untap by um, because of these uh, um, effects. You know, they say untap creatures and you can do a second battle phase. And I have cards um, like um, puppet strings uh, to help uh, untap my creatures if necessary. Um, I do have a couple of other, um, uh, other cards. Um, <clears throat> I don't have it on me, which was very dumb, but I do have um, two cards that involve tapping. Let me uh, let me go into the scry fall here, and I could pull them up. <clears throat> um, let's see, bag. Let's just type bag. Um, it's an artifact. It's an old artifact. Where is it at? Um, uh oh. <clears throat> okay, let's do advanced search here. Let's do the advanced search. <laughs> let's see here. Uh, Artifact, um, tap, T A P. Uh, that's all I need to pull up. There we go. Um, yeah, there's 362 artifacts that tap, but uh, this one that I have, mm, let's see, where are you at? Uh oh, it's gonna take a while. I can't believe I didn't um, have that readily available. I apologize for that. But uh, it's a very, very old card. It's in, I, uh, if I remember right, it's in Mirage. Either Mirage or Visions. And it lets me untap uh, my creature. Uh, it's not Lead Golem. Um, wow, it's really making me go far, huh? Mm. Where are you at? Maybe I should have. Yeah, you know what? Um, well, I'm almost there anyway. Um, I'm almost through this. It's not the skull catapult. It's really all the way in the end, huh? Let's see, Thran weaponry. Oh, um, yeah. See, like, uh, unerring sling. Uh, here we go. See, I have unerring sling. Three mana tap uh, tap an untapped creature you control. Unerring sling deals damage equal to the tap creature's power to target attacking or, or blocking creature with flying. Um, not a very good card, but uh, it's a it's a counter uh, so to speak. Um, now that I think about it, I should have um, typed in untapped because <laughs> that's what it does. It untaps. Uh, sorry about that. Uh, it's an artifact. Untap. Untap. But I do have Unerring Sling, but it'll be great against flying creatures. Um, the card that I have, it's not Ebony Horse. Oh my gosh, where, um, it's not on here? Come on. I don't want to step out and, oh crap. That means I'm gonna have to run off and get it. The problem is, is that it's really buried um, at the moment. No, it's not buried. Is it buried? No, not, no, no, it's not unerring sling. Crap. 
Mm. All right, let me go and get it. So here are my artifacts. Uh, let me get this card out for you. There we go. It's pretty old. But um, let's see here. Because it's got, um, basically what it is is that it's got, um, how do you say? Uh, the picture is an image, I think of a, it's, a, it's an image of a horse and it, and a, and it untaps target creature. Um, but the name eludes me. I know I should have had this ready, but I, you know, I had it on the top of my head and then it disappeared. Uh, very quickly so yeah uh, that's the that's brains for you mm. let's see uh, of course I could also go with equipment creatures but I don't have enough um, um, white uh, equipment creatures to uh, to work with mm. no nope, not this one that's giant based tome Come on, Kimmy. Oh, not you. Uh, well, here's the unerring swing, of course. Uh, let's see here. So that's something to um, to consider. Though I might not play um, play the swing. Uh, let's see here. What else? What else? What else? Hmm. Ruby Jet Mannequin. Bird of Incubator. Hmm. Horrible Hordes. Yeah, that's how far back. <laughs> that's how far back. Um. Yeah, I go way back. I started in fifth edition at the tail end when uh, just before sixth edition came out. Come on, I know I have you. Jade Monolith? No, not that one. Hmm. But still, um, I can't believe it didn't uh, it didn't show up on there. Uh, Tano's weaponry. Let's see, Helm of Awakening. It's pretty. Uh, it's a pretty old card. Smelting that. Nope. Um, Foundry Inspector. Nope. Coat of Arms. Hmm. Coat of Arms may not be a good idea. Um, chromatic sphere, uh, thumb screws, metallic sliver, ivory tower. Hmm. Maybe if I have crazy hand, uh, barbed wire, spell book, scavenge, jinxed ring. Um, nope, that's not it. Uh oh, worn power stone, metallic sliver. Uh, Barb Sextant? No. Squeeze Tone, Throne of Bones. Oh my gosh, where is it? <gasps> oh no. Oh, here's the um, here's the Mind Stone. This is the Weatherlight version. I'm gonna swap, uh, swap that out. <laughs> um, let me switch over. Here we go, let's go to the tabletop screen so you can see, um, see these cards. Throwing Dynamo. Let's see. I can't believe um, I can't um, I can't remember that card. It's a was a tool bag because um, it has a horse and and, and it's got its uh, and it's got satchels on uh, on it. Hold it. Jandor's saddle bag. There we go. There we go. I knew I'd find you. This is Jandor's saddle bag. Um, this is what I was um, trying to tell you. Um, oh, it's not even in the weather. It must be fifth edition. Uh, two mana uh, to cast three mana and a tap, and I can untap target creature. So this is what I was talking about. Um, card like this uh, to help um, put the put the creature back to the back in place. Uh, my creature back in place if need um, if needed. 
So, there we go. <laughs> I knew I'd find it. Uh, speaking of uh, finding, what happened to my poor, poor? Wow, it got bent, huh? Must have happened during shuffling. Hmm. You can really see, I don't know if you can see it, but I can see the, the indent, the crease. That stinks. So let me go ahead and swap it. I'm gonna swap out. Um, swap out these mind stones. So yeah, um, it's a main, um, the deck is uh, is a work in progress. Um, I need uh, some more mana rocks. I need to figure out how to really um, work this in. Um, get some more mana rocks. Uh, find a way to, uh, let's see, find a way to fit cards like Tarashi's Cry. Tarashi's Cry um, is a sorcery, and I could tap uh, up to uh, I could tap up to three creatures, three target creatures. It's um, pretty uh, it's pretty efficient. I'm not sure if I want to add an uh, unerring Selene, but I'm willing to throw in the Saddlebag, uh, Jandor's Saddlebag, uh, just so that way I can untap my creature every time um, I fight, just so that way I can have a blocker available. Um, equal to that creature's power to target attacking blocking creature with flying. Yeah, I don't think an unerring Selene um, will help me out, but Jandor's Saddlebag could help me out um, to untap uh, my creatures whenever I attack. Just so I can have a blocker, and I'm not sure if there's any effects um, that can allow me to trigger uh, when I'm tapping. That's something I'll have to look into, but I do have to find a way to fit everything uh, fit everything in into this because if um, let me show you Tarashi's cry. Because if a if I can if I can get the right type of uh, tap cards uh, like this here, this is uh, Tawashi's Cry is, uh, is an arcane uh, tap three. No, no, I don't have it out here. Uh, a tap three and a white. A tap up to three creatures. Uh, great way um, you know to get uh, get them out of the way, especially if I have smoke and kismet. Uh, combination. Tarashi's Cry just makes things more nastier for my opponent. Uh, a great screw drop. Uh, what else? Uh, let's see what else. Let's see who else has tap. Um, Rhett doesn't have much in terms of tap. Uh, yeah, see they untap creature. Uh, for the most part they do untap a creature. Um, I do have Aki Battle Squad but I only have one card. And that's being used in my modification deck with all my um, with all my uh, equipment uh, creatures, like the the rabbit battery. Um, tap target wall. <laughs> that's Alibaba. Let's see, sorceries, goblins. Um, they don't seem to. How many of these? Yeah, there's 254 cards. I'm not going to scroll through all this. But this one, um, I got to see if I have this. I don't know if I have it. If I do, I got to definitely get it in here. And this is Aggravated Assault. Untap all uh, creatures you control. After this main phase, there's an additional combat phase followed by an additional main phase. Um, activate only as a sorcery. So this is a must-have um, for this deck. It's an enchantment, which makes it all the more better. So I have Tarashi's Cry. Uh, I gotta figure out um, how to fit that in there, along with Jandor's saddle uh, saddlebags. But um, aggravated assault. If I have it, I need to get it in there. If not, then I gotta get the card and get it in there. Uh, and not only that, but if you read the ruling here, if you have enough mana, uh, the ability may be activated more than once in a turn. Uh, you will normally use this uh, during your post combat main phase, so you can untap any creatures that attack, which is true. But the fact that um, that I could do it multiple times, uh, aggravated assault. As long as I have, if I have like ten mana, I could do it twice over, multiple times. Uh, that's a big deal. And I think with um, with Ryu, I'm not sure if Ryu can do it multiple times. No, no, because uh, it says if there is a first combat phase. So um, if I do my first combat phase, 
Ryu kicks in. Uh, then I do Ryu's effect. Then when I go into the next main phase, uh, I activate Aggravate of the Soul, and I get a third attack phase. And if I have enough mana to do uh, to do it again, that'll be four combat phases. Um, I'm hoping that's uh, correct because being able to do that uh, is pretty uh, uh, is pretty da uh, damning. <laughs> and this is why I need tap uh, um, abilities that can uh, that can tap. Um, and so far, so far I got a good start here. But I do need the but I do want the equipment cards in there to um, for. Um, for those assist uh, for the assists and manipulations so it's a um, it's interesting that um, there isn't any any card involving untap um, when I would untap it would trigger something um, if there is um, you know comment down below let me know um, if there is a uh, an untap uh, card like uh, uh, Jandor's uh, saddlebags. If there's any any cards that can, any more cards that can untap. See, like this here, untap target creature gets plus two plus two until end of turn and can block an additional creature this turn. Like act of heroism. Here we go. So it looks like White has. Um, oh, do I have this? I think I have this. Alarum, untap target non-attacking creature. That creature gets plus one plus uh, three until end of turn. Uh, it's a, it's an instant. So yeah, it looks like the looks like white has that ability to untap uh, creatures. Uh, Beacon Hawk is another one uh, when it deals combat damage. Um, but I should try to make sure that they're warriors or samurai, right? Uh, let me come here and type warrior. Uh, untap warrior. Click. So there's only three warriors that can do this. Whenever Dauntless uh, Aven attacks, untap target creature you control. So there we go. We got um, that's one that can help me out. Um, Axe Guard Braggart, uh, Braggart, untap Axe Guard Braggart. Put a plus one plus one counter on it. Uh, okay, it's not bad. Um, Cloud Goat Ranger, uh, Kalnheim Commander. When Cloud Goat Ranger enters the battlefield, create three one one white soldier creature tokens. Uh, tap three untapped uh, Kithkin uh, you control. Uh, Cloud go Ranger gets plus two plus zero and nah, nah. The best card is Dauntless Aven. This is the best card for me to get. Uh, this is the best card for me to get here. Uh, it's a bird warrior. When it attacks, I can untap target creature and then I get that extra combat step, which is pretty cool. <coughs> I could get that extra combat step um, going. So yeah, um, in terms of white, that's uh, that's the one that I'm gonna need to get my hands on. Uh, what set is that in? That's in our devastation. No, I don't think I have that. Um, I should make a note of that, shouldn't I? Uh, just so I don't forget. Uh, mm, eh, I'll do that later. Don't worry about it. <laughs> <clears throat> Uh, and on the, um, let me see, what about for Samurai? Uh, Samurai. Samurai. Uh, oh. Samurai. Um, with the untap. Let's see here. Do I have any Samurai that can do that? No, no Samurai can do that. Interesting. Uh, what about in red? Oh, yeah, Aki Battle Squad. Um, like I said, I already, um, I'll have to, I hate the idea of taking this out because this fits 100%. Uh, I get an additional, um, combat phase. Unless I can find it, um, out in the wild, uh, the scoop up. But it is in the Neon Dynasty Commander and I only have one copy. And I hate the idea of taking it out of my, um, Sisse deck, uh, my Sisse deck, uh, for, um, uh, but I may have to consider that. Because anything that can let me um, get a second battle combat phase is something that I should strive to add to um, add to the deck. So let's pull up the Red Warriors here. Who has the untap ability? Um, plenty of them here. Uh, but they say tap and untap. Huh. Uh, let's see here. Whenever Kragma Butcher becomes untapped, 
it gets plus two plus zero so yeah I couldn't use the saddlebags on that mm. whenever you cast a multicolored spell and tap lobber crew okay mmm What's this here? Smelt Ward Gatekeepers. Human Warrior. When Smelt Ward Gatekeepers enters the battlefield, if you control two or more gates. Okay, so I need gate cards. Um, that's um, that's too reliant. Zealous Conscripts. Enter the battlefield. Gain control of the target permanent. Untap that permanent. Gains haste. Um, I got Fury of Akum, of course, which you saw. Uh, whenever a land enters, if it's your main phase, there's an additional and untap all the creatures. So, yeah. Uh, I already have him. So I may have to throw in the Aki Goblin Squad. I hate to take it out, but um, it fits this deck. Uh, even though, uh, yeah. Uh, Maraxis of Keld has power and toughness, each equal to the total number of untapped artifacts, creatures, and lands you control. Um, wow. Human Warrior. Four mana and two, two red. Oh wow. Oh that's scary, quite honestly. For each uh each uh each equal to the total number of untapped artifact creatures and lands you control. That means <coughs> that means if I were to attack um alone, you know what I'm saying, to trigger those effects, he would have all that beef. Wow. But um maybe uh maybe not really the the trouble so yeah i think i'm gonna end up um, throwing in the uh the aki squad which uh stinks <laughs> um artifacts let's see untap uh for the artifacts so aside from the the saddlebags which i got does any of these guys do anything there's dermal taxi Tap two untapped creatures you control. Um, Ebony Horse. Untapped target creature uh, you control. Prevent all damage that would be dealt to and dealt by that creature this turn. Interesting. But I can untap target attacking creature I control. No, that's not going to work. Because it's against my creature. So yeah, there's plenty of good cards there. There's uh there's plenty of good cards. So I'm not without resources. Um, it, this is a very this is gonna be a very very fun deck. Um, I'm definitely gonna have to throw in the Goblin Squad and find a way to fix the um, Tarashi's Cry. And if I do have um, Aggravated Assault, uh, sorry, uh, let's just say Aki Goblin. I don't know why I'm complicating things just say Aki Goblin <laughs> there we go ah jeez now you're, you're you're frustrating me there we go there we go Atli, um, Aki Battle Squad so it's a, and it's a samurai type so I get this um, well I have it if I move it out of Sisei's deck and put it into there I get the the extra the com extra combat uh, combat phase so I hate the idea, but it's all right. Um, it's all right if it means that I can do this, and uh, and it only works when there's uh, one or more modified creatures. So I got artifact um, equipment, so that helps out. All right, okay. So there's the uh, so we got a plan. Uh, also plus one plus one counters, but the point is we got a plan. <laughs> so Jandor's saddlebag is gonna go in there. Tarashi's crying. Um, Aki battle squad. Um, those are three I'm going to try and squeeze into the deck. Um, and then uh, we'll see what happens. Uh, oh, and if I have uh, Aggravated Assault. Um, and, that, uh, and that bird that, got, that I completely forgot. <laughs> that warrior bird, the, the Avon. <clears throat> the Avon. I better put that name on there. Let me pull that up. The, the Avon. Oh, crap. There's 235 Avons. Um, cause now, now I forgot and I better not forget, um, uh, warrior. Let me just make sure it's on my screen here. All right. There we go. And there we are. Yeah, there we go. Dawn was even there. Make sure that's on there. <laughs> All right. 
Uh, there we go. So, got a plan here. Four cards um, that I need to round up and put into this deck. So, that is my um, Ryu Storm's Edge uh, deck. Um, uh, if we could be able to see it. There we go. <laughs> um, there we go. Try to get the lighting. Ah, <laughs> uh, there we go. There we go. Ryu Storm's Edge. Let me straighten that out. <laughs> if we could. Oh, crap. I, um, I, I, I almost got it. I almost got it. And there we go. <laughs> Ryu Storm's Edge. That's my uh, Ryu Storm's Edge commander deck. It's all about tapping in equipment. That's fine. <laughs> That's going to look weird on the thumbnail. <laughs> yeah, let's do it again. Let's do it again. <laughs> there we go. Ryu Storm's Edge. <laughs> <laughs> thank you all for joining me uh next week uh analytics and logistics that's what um the next uh subject will be for my commander decks <laughs> uh, thank you all for joining me and i wish you all a good night a buenas noches and oye sumi nasai